Friends, welcome back to our homestead. Welcome back inside of our solar room. Today we're going to be talking about several issues relating to state of charge and voltage on your battery bank for your off-grid system. We're going to be talking about something that I can only call voltage drift from state of charge. We're going to be talking about an odd event that happened with my system about a month and a half ago. And we're briefly going to talk about the firmware update on these batteries that we recently did. Everything is running perfectly and running your house. There's just a few quirky things that are happening that I want you to be aware of if you are a new owner of a solar power system. Let's talk about those. So this thing that I have named voltage drift from state of charge is happening with some of my batteries. Now what I mean by that is some of the batteries have a state of charge that is telling me 90%. Some of them are as low as 72%. However, if you look at the voltage on each battery, they are all the same at 53.2 volts. Here we go. This is our fourth battery down in the stack. You see it's at 53.2 volts. It's at 76%. This one, 53.2, 72%. This one, 90% state of charge, still 53.2 volts. And this one, 74%, 53.2 volts. I'm gonna talk about a little bit later why that could be an issue. But all of these batteries are the EG4 LL version one batteries. They were purchased over about a two year period. So of course, some are older and some are newer. Now we know that in our battery bank, the older the battery, the less its capacity is going to be. However, on a battery that's rated for 7,000 cycles, that's about two years old, your capacity should almost be about 100%. It's not that old. They should last me about 15 years. So a few other things that could cause that state of charge to be off by a certain percentage on some batteries is the specific BMS that went into it. Now I know the BMS on these EG4 LLs has evolved over time. It keeps getting better. They keep working on the BMS in them. So the one that is very far off could be an earlier version of the same BMS that EG4 uses for these batteries. And additionally, it could be a slight calibration issue on that particular BMS or even the cells themselves. Every single solitary three volt battery cell that is used in all of these systems is, has like a fingerprint. There are minute differences in each one of them. So all of them are not gonna have perfectly the same capacity or perfectly the same voltage or so on and so forth. They just don't have that. That's the lithium chemistry. And there's something else that's really important too. And this comes from the current connected YouTube channel. Those guys are great and they do a lot of testing. This chart shows the huge difference between state of charge over a discharge curve for a 12 volt battery. So just times that by four for your 48 volt battery. So that your discharge curve and your charge curve. So you can see on the left hand side of the chart at 12.8 volts on that blue line, which is your discharge curve, you're still at about 99% state of charge. And if you carry over that 12.8 volt line all the way over to your charge curve, you can see you're down at probably 3% of your battery state of charge. This is why voltage and state of charge calculations are so challenging and so difficult to get right for the lithium chemistry. So essentially for a 48 volt battery, it could read 51.2 volts and be almost full or almost completely empty. And I'll talk in a little bit about potential solutions, but I don't think there is a perfectly good solution for this issue. And if you're thinking about balancing, top balancing, I will talk about that in a minute as well. Let's get into what we did to update the firmware on these first. I know that's a separate topic, but it is also very important for those batteries to be communicating properly with all of your equipment and between each other. If you take a look on the screen now, you see a common chart that shows the relationship between voltage 
and state of charge for lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And I got to tell you, throw it out because they are not accurate and I would not pay attention to them. Even the slightest error in calculating open circuit voltage by the BMS throws everything off. And that is why calculating state of charge on a lithium iron phosphate battery is extremely difficult, if not impossible. Now there are other algorithms used. One is called a Kalman filter that is used by, I think a lot of electric vehicle manufacturers to calculate state of charge on their batteries. But I don't know if those are put in or that algorithm is put into the BMSs of home battery systems like this. That algorithm might be a little bit more accurate, but again, I haven't found much information on that. I quickly want to talk about what we did to update the firmware on our batteries. These are the EG4 LL version ones, as I mentioned, and the newest firmware you will need at least Windows 10 or newer. When I put this system in, I used a Windows 7 computer and I only did this top battery here. I only updated the firmware. This worked for my stack for a while, but then there were some things that were happening with the system that threw it off and we needed to update all nine batteries that I have here. So I mentioned in a previous video that all you had to do was update the firmware on the main communication battery that's going to the inverter. That turned out to not be 100% true it worked for a while and was true for a while and then it reverted backwards. I don't know why. So I was able to get some help from Signature Solar to update these batteries. When we did that, many of the batteries perfectly went and updated the firmware. However, one of them, which is very odd, dropped the state of charge to about 18%. And cycling through the system, cycling the batteries on and off, it would not reset itself to 100%, which is what the batteries were at that time that we updated them until about an hour later. So just keep that in mind. However, at that point, that battery was reading 54 volts. So you can see that shift from the state of charge and the voltage was very far off at that point. And then it reverted back to somewhat normal, 75% what it sits at now at 53.2 volts. And I want to bring attention to something that might help you out here. When you are programming your inverters for your battery stack, you need to program in the amount of amp hours that you have. So the inverter can read it properly. And it was only reading seven out of my nine batteries. Both inverters were only reading 700 amp hours instead of 900 amp hours. And that was because we had a bad cable. These green cables that come with the batteries, they can go bad. So one of them was bad. It was in the middle of the stack. As soon as we replaced that cable, everything was cool in the inverters properly read 900 amp hours for my batteries. Now here's something really interesting. Float, bulk, and equalize charging terms are used for lithium iron phosphate batteries. It's usually associated, associated with lead acid batteries. So for a 48 volt battery, your bulk and your equalization charging uh, voltage should be 58.4 and your float voltage is 54.0. But when I look back through the data on this battery bank, I've never seen a voltage over 55 and all the settings in my inverter should be correct. So let's talk about that balancing for a minute. When I got all these batteries, I top balanced every battery. Now there are varying instructions on how to top balance lithium iron phosphate batteries. I followed the instructions that I had from Signature Solar at the time. Again, that was about two years ago. So what that top balancing does is match the cells by capacity and voltage, and you need to maintain that over time, and that's what the BMS should do. And it should keep an equal voltage at all state of charge levels within each battery between all the cells. And that happens inside the batteries with all the cells in series. But all these batteries in the stacks are parallel. So can we still do that? Will they still balance with each other? That's what the, all the communications cables should do and the BMSs should do, but I'm finding what I'm calling drift. Now, why is this important? Well, 
is because if you have your inverter set up to cut off at a certain voltage to protect your batteries and for the EG4 LLs for them to remain in warranty you have to get have that cutoff that low state of charge cutoff set at 20 percent if you have one of your batteries where that state of charge has completely diverged from the voltage then what happens depending on that divergence does your battery bank shut down too early or too late so for us if that second battery in our stack right here with the 90 percent state of charge was showing if that was up here in the communications position then that could cause some issues for the bank itself and when it shut down or didn't shut down so if you're monitoring your system as you should and you notice some of that divergence or drift i'm calling it from state of charge and voltage can you move those batteries in the stack to a different position that's maybe not as critical as your top communication battery i would say that might work so maybe take your newest batteries if you know what those are and move them to the closer position to the communications now i have confirmed that the size of my wire is completely appropriate for the system the size of my bus bars the way everything's paralleled together on those bus bars and into the inverters will have no effect on what i'm talking about with the state of charge a second solution might be this right here this is a victron shunt this shunt is going to measure current and since current is a constant with the batteries each battery is 100 amp hours so i have 900 amp hours the readout that you would get from this on your phone app is going to show you how much capacity you've got left however since i have eg4 inverters and not victron inverters this would need to somehow communicate with them to tell them the proper point to shut down if we're in a low state of charge situation can we add a servo to this and get that communications to talk to the eg4s i'm not 100 sure but as another monitoring device that's going to be more accurate this is going to be probably your best bet and if you're looking for one of these i'll have it linked in the description below the video now you can also change the settings within the inverters to read voltage instead of state of charge but that can only be done in the user-defined lead acid mode on the 6000 xps so instead of using that state of charge percentage which may be off on your batteries you can switch it to the lead acid and then use voltage but keep in mind you need to know your battery bank health and age to be able to do that so these batteries being a few years old and like i said i've never seen them over 55 volts that could be a little bit challenging but again maybe that 55 volts could be related to how the inverters were reading the state of charge on the batteries now i really want to show you that odd event which happened to our system on march 28th and i haven't been able to figure out 100 percent why the system did this but we had a complete system shut down so you can see here we've got march 28th 2024 and we are discharging overnight and we come into the morning here 6:58 in the morning so on and so forth the sun starts to hit the panels with the blue line you can see that here we get to about eight o'clock 802 and boom by 810 the batteries completely shut down you can see my state of charge was 27 percent so by the time that sun came up started charging i should have been okay but the entire system shut down completely so you can see between 802 and 810 it just shut down but i can tell you it happened way faster than that because the recording points of the data within here is every few minutes it's not every second it's not every one minute it's every few minutes so between 802 and 810 maybe drop to 15 percent and then zero really quickly within probably a minute okay now i'm going to show you from the data side of things and you can see here we're at march 28th 802 and we're at 27 percent and then again 810 zero percent but you can see the voltage has dropped dramatically in just three or four percent here 
We are at 49 volts at 31%, 328, 802 AM, we're at 43.8 volts, reading 27%. But if you look at some of those charts that are terrible and don't use them, you can see 43 volts is below 10% from their calculations. Now, what I believe happened was that I had one or two batteries that were almost depleted and they were well below that 27% state of charge that the top communications battery was reading. Not all the batteries were talking to one another properly and the BMSs could be off a little bit. So I know that some of the batteries were not reading properly and they were probably well below that cutoff level that I had set in the inverters. And at that exact moment, I had a few of my mini splits kick on. So there was a load of maybe 1200 watts, give or take, and it completely shut the system down. It sent the batteries into protection mode. So there's a real world example of something that happened to me that you might wanna be aware of. So you can see that monitoring voltage and state of charge for the inverters and the BMSs in these batteries can be a little odd at times and it could cause them to shut down. Could a current monitoring device like this be integrated into these that might be a little bit more accurate? I'm not sure, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm just hoping that this information and this real world example of what happened to me can help and benefit you. And if you've had any experience with an issue like this and you wanna talk about it, please leave me a comment in the comment section below the video. As always, all the equipment that I use is listed in the video description below the video. Now go check this video out right here, which is our full installation video on the EG4 6000 XP inverters. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.